많이 보면 함께 네, 선보이신 샤오빈의 플러스 오스트라이 연주기 모시고 저희 바로 반대 시작하도록 할 텐데 시간은 없으니까 짧게 인사를 나누고 바로 질문 받도록 하겠습니다. And as uh, it's wonderful to have you with us this evening, and thank you for sharing the incredible production of Richard III. I think I speak on behalf of everybody here when I say that it's absolutely mind blowing. So we don't have a lot of time, I'm afraid, so we'll go straight to the questions and take um, questions from the floor, if that's okay. Yeah, 그러면 질문 있으신 분손 들어주시면 저희가 바로 마이크 닦아드리도록 할게요. 저희 가장 먼저 손 들어주시는 남자분들. 아, 예. 일단 공연 너무 잘 봤고요. 멋진 연주 감사합니다. 어 다른 게 아니고 그러면 이제 리차드가 보면 가장 공연 이제 진행 공연 진행 동안 옷을 많이 갈아입는데요. 그 의상을 그렇게 자주 많이 갈아입는 어떤 특별한 이유가 있는 것인지 그리고 각 의상별로 어떤 의도를 가지고 하신 것인지 궁금해서 질문 드렸습니다. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for the incredible performance. I really enjoyed it. And the character of Richard III keeps changing his costumes throughout the play. So, is there a reason why he keeps changing his physical appearances? And are there any special messages or meanings attached to anything that he wears on the stage? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm happy to be. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We take it as a sign. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, being at the show tonight. I'm happy to be back here in uh, Seoul, where we have a wonderful audience. I'm really uh, admiring you for sharing uh, our taste of theatre. Um, concerning the costumes, in the beginning he says, um, that uh, he's surprised that he can seduce um, Lady Anne, and he says that he's underestimating his appearance, that he seems to be more beautiful than, um, than he thought he is. So he then uh, says in the beginning he's going to um, ask a tailor to make some suits for him. And what we see later is these uh, suits which he prepared and uh, which he made for him, uh, or Taylor made for him, and which is um, very different to what uh, he was wearing before. He is stepping into the ring and um, it's part of his, um, it's part of his strategy uh, to have different appearances and uh, most and overall it, uh, it's trying to um, supply him with a very elegant appearance even though you still see his hunchback but of course there is a meaning in the end when he has this uh, different costume and he's trying to stand upright and uh, forgetting his uh, being disabled 네, 우선 어, 다시 서울에 돌아와서 굉장히 오랜만에 한국에 들어왔는데 굉장히 훌륭한 관계 앞에서 이 작품을 선보이게 돼서 굉장히 기쁘게 생각을 합니다. 리처드 선수 의상 같은 경우에는 그 초반에 그가 이제 레이디 앤을 유혹하는 듯 성공하고 굉장히 놀라움을 표시하면서 어, 내가 내 스스로 너무 과소평가했나 보다, 내 외모가 내가 생각했던 것보다 훨씬 더 훌륭한가 보다 라는 대사를 한 적이 있는데요. 그에 이어서 많이 대단차에 가서 굉장히 멋있는 남복을 지어 입을 거야 라는 이야기도 한 적이 있습니다. 그래서 그 남복을 나중에 입고 나타났는데 이 모든 것이 어떻게 보면 그의 전략의 일부라고 볼수 있겠습니다. 계속해서 본인의 외모를 이제 가꾸고 이제 고상하게 바꿔 나가면서 이제 여전히 등을 부어 있지만 어떻게 보면 새로운 환경, 새로운 어, 경제 상황을 추구하고 또 끝에 가서는 또 다른 의상을 입고 나와서 어, 곧게 성공하고 노력하는 모습도 이제 끝에서는 이제 우리가 많이 발견할 수 있겠습니다. Did you translate it? I'm happy to be back in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
그 여기 중간에 생기어 주신 여기 변장에 계속 흔들어 주세요. 아, 아, 요, 아, 죄송해 다시 갈게요. I know it might sound very silly, but I guess most of us would be curious about this. Why naked? <laughs> Why naked? <laughs> so there, are, there are two scenes uh, that actors are really naked. So I, I just want to know, uh, are there any particular reason that you did that? <laughs> 네, 영화에 등장하는 그 노출 장면에 대해서 질문 드리고 싶은데 남자 배우가 노출로 등장하는 장면이 두 장면이 있는데 그 연출 의도에 대해서 묻고 싶습니다. Because they are beautiful. 아름답게 된 거죠. I mean, um, it seems surprising for you that they are naked. For me, it's not surprising because it, it makes sense in the play, in the performance, you know, when Richard is offering the sword to her, um, he undresses because he wants to show that there is no strategy, no trick, he doesn't hide uh, a, a dagger or something else. He's really pure and barely naked and offering himself to her. So uh, that's one reason. And the other reason in the end, it's all, oh, not in the end, but uh, when we talk about uh, his brother, which is killed, he is uh, uh, in a prison. Uh, he has no clothes anymore. He, he tends to be forgotten. He's just a blanket. And, uh, and again, for me, it seems um, logic. It's not, it's not that I'm kind of uh, having any strategies here. 네, 이제 관객 입장에서는 조금 놀라셨을 수도 있는데 그게 흐름에 굉장히 필요하고 적합한 장면이라고 생각을 했습니다. 초반에 레이디 앤의 이제 구애를 하는 장면에서 그가 모든 것을부터 던지고 나는 아무런 무기도 갖고 있지 않고 아무런 전략도 속일 수도 없다는 것을 보여주면서 굉장히 순수한 모습으로 그녀가 다가가는 모습을 발견할 수 있고요. 그리고 이제 좀 극이 진행되면서 감옥에서 죽음을 받는 그의 형제 같은 경우에는 이제 모두에게서 잊혀지고 버림받고 단면만을 덮고 있는 그런 모습을 볼수 있는데 이 모든 것이 굉장히 이제 논리적인 그의 흐름이라는 생각에서 딱히 제가 여쭤적으로 운영한 전략은 아니었습니다. 네. 뭐 아까 처음 들었는데 제가 마이크를 못 들었던 네. 잠깐 강의를 다시 한번 선물해 주시겠어요? This lady was here in this one. Yeah. 아, 네. Yeah. 그럼 연출님이 골라주신 분께 먼저 마이크를 드릴게요. <웃음> 안녕하세요. 어, 서울에서는 햄릿의 햄릿에 이어서 처음으로 올라오는 토마스 오스터만 제이스피어였는데 어, 제이스피어의 숱한 작품 중에서도 리처드 삼세를 고르신지 이유가 궁금하고 이번에 올린 리처드 삼세를 통해서 가장 하고 싶었던 말이 무엇인지 여쭙고 싶습니다. Okay, so this is the second Shakespeare production that you have shared with the three audiences after Hamlet. So why we did the third, and what particular message were you trying to get across to the audience with this production? Uh, well, that is difficult to answer after having seen the show. I mean, um, I prefer that you tell me what you were uh, experiencing. <laughs> I did my job. And I did my job. <laughs> Everything is said. There's nothing more to be said about this play from my side. 네 이제 연출로서 저의 역할은 이제 극을 여러분께 선보이는 것까지가 이제 저의 역할이라고 하고 무대에서 모든 것을 보여드리기 때문에 이제 극을 어떻게 해석하고 받아들이냐는 관객 여러분의 몫인 것 같습니다. 아, 어 저는 그 리처드가 결국 그 마지막 부분에서 거울을 볼때 본인과 화해를 한다고 생각을 했는데 아무리 추워하고. 본인 마음을 스스로의 마음에 들지 않는 인물이라도 스스로를 이해하고 스스로와 화해를 하는 것이 가장 중요하다고 말하고 싶은 것이었다고 생각을 했습니다. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, um, in the scene where he looks at himself in the mirror, I actually see that as a moment of reconciliation that he achieves with himself, no matter how deformed and hideous he still is. So I actually found a moment of reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> Your way of seeing it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a mirror, no? It's, I mean, he's, he's 
looking at his cell. 네, 이제 뭐 관객분께서 이제 그렇게 보셨던 거 이제 아, 이제 같고요. 이렇게 정말 말씀하신 것처럼 거울을 보면서 이제 스스로를 굉장히 자세히 들여다보는 그런 장면이었습니다. 네, 그러면 저희 다음 질문 받아볼 텐데 가운데 있는 어떤 거 같고 저희 조금 저희 One more thing, there is no clear message here, you know. There's not a clear message. If, if, if there was, I mean, there's this very nice saying of uh, Woody Allen says, if you have a message, send a letter. <laughs> uh, there is no message. It's, it's a complexity of what happens to him before the play even starts, how he is uh, physical, what he's trying to do, he's challenging destiny, he's challenging the world he lives in, which is a good thing, but then he challenges in a very violent way. And now what's happening is also, not, there's no message. No? The only message is if you uh, were entertained by the show. And if you were entertained by the show, um, that is a good thing for me, because then you were entertained by the fact that looking at a very evil guy entertains you. And that means that we all have this possibility inside of ourselves, and that's what I was playing with. 네, 그리고 굉장히 또 중요한 것은 이 극에서 딱히 전하고자 하는 특정한 메시지는 없다는 것입니다. 영화 배우 감독 우디 앨런이 메시지를 전하고 싶은 편지를 쓰라고 말한 적이 있는데 그만큼 이 극에서는 딱히 관객분들께 전달을 하고자 꼭 전달해야만 하는 메시지는 없다고 얘기할 수 있고요. 어, 리차드라는 인물이 갖고 있는 서사는 사실 이게 시작되기 전부터 시작된 것이고 그냥 끊임없이 스스로를 둘러싸고 있는 굉장히 부담으로 굉장히 폭력적인 사회, 그 세상에 도전장애를 내밀고 있습니다. 그래서 이런 모습을 보면서 관객 여러분이 즐거움을 느끼셨다면 그 연출 모습이 굉장히 깊게 다가왔는데요. 그것은 곧 여러분께서 이제 악인의 행동, 악인의 활동을 보고 굉장히 즐겁게 느꼈다. 또 보고 그, 어, 그런 거 우리 내면에도 어떻게 보면 그런 똑같은 행동을 할수 있는 잠재력과 가능성이 존재하고 있다는 뜻을 암시하고 있기 때문입니다. 네, 그럼 저희 다음 질문 받아보도록 할게요. 음, 네, 저희 여기 앞에 분이 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 영국 공연을, 이 공연을 처음인데요. 음, 토마스 오스터 와이어의 영국 공연, 저의 첫 공연이 된것 같아서 굉장히 영광스럽고, 어, 대단한 연출을 한것 같다라는 분위기를 많이 느낄 수 있었어요. 객석에 앉아있을 때. 그리고 그걸 보면서 이책 선생의 내용을 쉽게 이해할 수 있었어요. 그 희곡을 읽지 않았음에도 불구하고 그래서 그것에 감사를 드리고 개인적으로 연출을 하면서 가장 공들인 장면이 있다, 있다면 그리고 제가 이, 자, 이 연극에서 기억했으면 내가 이 장면에 굉장히 노력했어 이런 장면이 있다면 하나 <웃음> 소개해 주실 수 있는지 <웃음> Okay, so this happens to be my very first theatre experience, so I'm really glad that I picked your production as my first, very first play. You should have gone to a Korean production. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I could feel that I was witnessing something incredible and while I was watching the play. And although I hadn't read the play until the third and by Shakespeare, I could still follow the narrative, still follow the story. So that was very um, entertaining, very enjoyable. But um, I'm sure that a lot of effort went into every single scene in the play. But if you had to pick this one particular scene that you think um, you actually tried really your best on, um, which one would that be? <laughs> The, the scene which I thought was the best one. It's for you actually uh, put most effort and most sort of, um, time and effort into. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one that you would like everyone to remember. Oh. Uh, that's difficult to say. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy and surprised that you uh, felt the way you felt about the show because. I do believe the show is much more enjoyable when you read Henry VI 
before, which is a three parts play, and also Richard II or Henry IV and Henry V. So this play is the end of the War of the Roses. This is the end of uh, six plays, and it tells the story of the, the struggle for power between two houses of Tudor and Lancaster. And um, if you want, there are, the, the history is getting more and more violent. So if you want, Richard as a monster is the result of the generations before who were already fighting for power and uh, put a curse on the generations following. So I would recommend each and everybody to go home and read Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> and come back tomorrow. I envy you because you will have a great experience in front of you, which I already have behind me. <laughs> Okay, so I um, happen to have read Richard III, so I was able to enjoy the play fully. And um, I have two very short questions. First of all, um, I wonder why you got um, um, a male actor to play the role of Margaret. And also, um, Richard III is undoubtedly an evil character, a vice character who has many people killed. But at the same time, I find myself pitying the character towards the end of the play. So, what's your take on this character, Richard III, and how we should feel about this character? Well, actually, I'm very happy if you say that you pity him in the end, because um, I can't recall any production which I saw where you pity Richard III in the end. And that was my point, or one of my points. It was very important for me to have him, after all the evil things he did, all of a sudden you feel empathy for this monster. Um, and I think, again, this is very tricky and very contradictional, because uh, he is a monster, and at the same time, you find yourself in a situation of, oh, but he's still a human being. You know? And this is actually um, how I try to portray the world in a very contradictionary way. Not in black and white, but there's, everything is in the other thing, you know. And, um, yeah, and then concerning Margaret, you know, 
all of the characters in Shakespeare times were performed by male actors in, in the Elizabethan theatre. All female uh, characters were performed by men. And um, especially in the case of Margaret, I found it uh, tempting to do so. Um, because, first of all, we don't have any older actress in our company. <laughs> so he, he had to do the job. <laughs> um, second, I, I like this, um, uh, this way how the character all of a sudden becomes ambiguous and also um, threatening. Um, and also what I try to do is to tell the story with the least, with the smallest amount of actors. So a lot of actors are changing roles constantly and the actor who performs Margaret is later on playing uh, the killer, for example, he is uh, uh, Katsky, um, he is uh, changing roles constantly, like a lot of the others. So we try to get along with a minimum of, of uh, distribution of, of casting. Can I join you? I'm so curious Thank <laughs> you. 
I have one question for each of you. My question for the director is about the, um, the two princes. I went to see another production of Richard III earlier, a Korean production earlier in the year, and they actually had children actors play the roles of the two princes, but you had puppets instead, so tell us the reason why, and then we'll move on to your question. Um, why I have puppets? Um, I thought it's easy in this play to have children on stage because what I experience is when, I, when I'm watching other people's production of Richard III, I always have the feeling that by putting the children on stage, they try to achieve the impact of the violence with the real children. But I do believe you have to achieve this with the show. And, um, and also, what the, what the princes are saying is very witty, it's very clever. So it's very difficult to teach this to children of this age to be that clever in, uh, uh, in, the, in the dialogue with Richard and um, the others. Uh, but I, I, I think it's so beautiful that I really wanted to achieve that people understand what this small uh, character is doing. And also, of course, um, I like the fact that these two princes are already dead bodies when they come on stage. You know? They have no future in front of them. They are already their own puppets, their own ghosts when they go on stage. There is no future for this branch of the family. Of Native Americans painting their faces white. And 
What I like is, or there, there was a, a film director, he saw the performance, and he told me that they paint, their, paint, they paint their faces white because they want the enemy to project his own fear into, in, into your blank face. Mm -hmm. Like a little. So if, if it's blank, you don't see any emotion. So you, you project your own emotion into the other one's face. And so I really love the moment when Richard's taking the mirror. So in a, in a way, he's reflecting a mirror in a mirror. So that's pure insanity. And of course, it is a motive or it represents his paranoia, that his paranoia becomes insane and that he's becoming his own enemy. So you're absolutely right in saying that yeah, he's, he's mirroring or reflecting his own, his own fear. Yes, I think it's very important to talk about it. Richard is a character of the character, but I think it's very important to talk about it. I think it's very important to talk about it. I think it's very important to talk about it. So, I think it's very important to talk about it. Why you choose first time in your life to go to dinner? 
Aren't you thinking about it? I mean, I'm happy, but it's a real question for me. Thank <laughs> you. 